Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to take a look at some productivity software. Well, we're actually going to take a look at that over the next little while. But today we're going to take a look at word processing. Now, some of you are familiar with this. You guys use Microsoft Word every day. Or maybe it's Google Docs or it's OpenOffice. It doesn't really matter which one you use. The concepts are fairly similar. So, make sure you get out your notes, you follow the storm philosophy, sit back and enjoy. So what are you going to learn today? Well, we're going to talk about the importance of word processors. Why do we need them? Why do we use them? What can they do? Then we're going to take a look at using your word processing software. More specifically, using your Microsoft Word software. We're going to take a look at menus, toolbars, saving a document, tools, spell check, and thesaurus. So the importance of word processors are huge. right? If, think about this. Imagine you were still using a typewriter. That would be very annoying. Imagine you still had to use a pen and paper for everything. That would also be very annoying. Word processors have given us such efficiency, such effective use of, these, of the written word that we can now create all sorts of things. It is one of the most important functions of computer software because it can do so many things. It can create agendas, brochures, business cards, calendars, certificates, flyers, invitations, labels, letters, newsletters, reports, resumes, and a countless amount of other things. It can do things that look so professional that you will be the envy of your peers and coworkers, that you will be promoted to the highest echelon of your corporation, that you will become CEO and then maybe prime minister and then rule the world just because you used a word processor. Yes, that's how important these are to your life. So when it comes to using your word processor, you have to become familiar with the various functions that's involved. The one thing that you have to become familiar with are the menus. In Microsoft Word, at least, their menus are listed across the top, and each of these commands from File, Edit, View, Insert, Format, Tools, Table, Window, and Help each have drop-down menus, and within those they have countless functions that you can perform on your word process document. Becoming familiar with these menus will help you, will aid you, will make things much, much, much more efficient, and you can create things much, much, much more quickly. And that's the key. You want to be able to type your documents up, produce fantastic professional reports very quickly and these menus will help so one of the first menus is the file menu you can create new documents you can open existing documents you can close the document you're working on you can save you can publish to a web page you can print you can figure out the page and set it up in a way that you like right you can send it to various recipients and you can open fairly recent documents the file menu is one of those menus that you will access frequently because you will want to save it frequently Another menu that you'll use frequently is the edit menu. When you drop this menu down, you can see all sorts of different functions, from finding characters to cutting, copying, and pasting. Pasting special. Yes, special pasting. To replacing characters, to undoing and repeating, and that's something I do a lot of, undoing a lot of mistakes, right? So that's something that will help you. The insert menu allows you to insert a number of different items, into your document from pictures to text boxes to diagrams to objects to all sorts of things that will help you page numbers and breaks help you organize your document in such a way that you can create professional looking projects and reports and this is a, a, a feature that you will become familiar with with time the tools menu is also another useful feature because you can access language word count spelling and grammar thesaurus right and you can do all sorts of things to your document that manipulates it enough that you can interact with it, such as your macros. So, another feature that you'll become familiar with. However, if you do not always want to access the drop-down menus, well, toolbars are a useful addition to Microsoft Word. Toolbars contain all sorts of icons, and if you added all the toolbars into your Microsoft Word window, you would be left with nothing to type on. That's how many toolbars exist. Typically you have about two or three toolbars that you use regularly. Anything more, then you start to clutter your window. However, you can include all the commands that are available in the drop-down menus into toolbars. Make things easier. So these icons are a quick shortcut. You can access them quickly but just by scrolling over with your mouse and clicking on them. They're represented by little symbols. For example, instead of clicking on the file drop down menu then scrolling down and hitting save you can simply click the little icon that illustrates the save feature it looks like a little hard disk 
right? These toolbars can be added or removed. You can make it completely customizable. It depends on your profession or what you're using your word processor frequently for. And to various toolbars cater more specifically to various jobs. So to add or remove toolbars, it's a very simple process by accessing the View drop-down menu. When you access the View drop-down menu, scroll down to Toolbars, and then another drop-down menu, and all the toolbars are listed. You can select by a check mark appearing or deselect, and you'll remove the check mark. And those toolbars will then appear on your Microsoft Word window. You can customize these. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you'll see a customize feature. And another window will pop up where you can customize commands and icons in the various toolbars. Now before you get into utilizing Microsoft Word too much, we want to make sure that you understand how to save a document. Saving a document is key. You don't want to wait to save it. You want to save it as soon as you begin working on the document. Even if you have not typed anything into the document itself, save it. Give it a name. Therefore, it will continuously save under that name and you will become it will become habit for you to save it. You want to save regularly because Otherwise, there is a great potential for data loss. If your computer automatically shuts down, if it, the program freezes up, if any number of things happen, you want to make sure that you have the saved document. Microsoft Word does a regular save, and you can access this in your temp file. However, get into the habit of saving regularly. Don't wait too long. Save every two minutes, five minutes. Set some sort of time that makes you kind of save regularly. When you access the file drop-down menu, or you click the little save icon, a menu such as this will pop up. This is your save menu, and we've seen this under file management. But here you can access shortcuts to frequently used folders. You can save in the drop down menu by selecting any number of folders on the network or your drive. And you type your file name in there that you will remember. You can even select this, the type of file. Do you want to save it as a DOC file, which is your older version of Microsoft Word that can, is compatible across any platform, any Microsoft Word, or do you want to save it on the current feature, the current version? So you can access any number of features within the Save As or Save window, and you can customize your file accordingly. One of the tools that you will frequently use, and I hope you frequently use, is the Spell Check tool. This will find both spelling and grammatical errors, if you notice anything there. Right? So you'll be able to catch if you type in there instead of there instead of there, or loose instead of lose, potentially for grammar, but not for spell check. You have to be careful with spell check, because even if you type the, a word correctly, it may be the wrong word, and that's something you want to make sure. Proofread, proofread, proofread. The one thing, however, you want to do is look for the red wavy lines in your document. Those red wavy lines will uh, indicate that you have made a spelling error. So how do you check if you have? Well, there's a number of ways that you can check for spelling errors. If you select the Tools drop-down menu, you can see that Spell Check is an option. Or in your toolbars, you might see a little ABC with a check mark. That's the icon for Spell Check. Another quick way to access Spell Check is to simply click on the F7 key. This will bring up Spell Check. And the other way is when you're looking through your document. If you see those red wavy lines, right click on them. They will give you suggestions for the correct spelling of your words. Another useful tool is the thesaurus. It sounds like a dinosaur, doesn't it? No, it's a thesaurus, not stegosaurus. This thesaurus provides you with options to words that you use commonly. So rather than use the same word over and over and over again, which becomes repetitive, and if you're typing a report, you don't want such repetitive use of words, you can find synonyms. These are words that substitute for that word. It has the same meaning, it's just a different word. So you can avoid duplicating the same word, or word, or word, or word, twice, or three times. Accessing the thesaurus, again, is available through your tools drop-down menu or by clicking Shift F7. This will bring up a window such as what you see here. It identifies the word under the looked up, it identifies the meanings, and it provides you with synonyms, or synonyms. Yes, it's a difficult word to pronounce. And these are alternatives to the word that you use. So instead of large, you can click on big, great, huge, fat, bulky, hefty, outsized, or the antonym, which is the opposite, which is small. So that brings us to the end of our basics in Microsoft Word. Think about this question for a second. What functions do students use most commonly? 
is it spell check? Is it thesaurus? Is it file? Is it save? Is it insert? Is it view? Is it any number of things? And whatever they use most commonly, maybe we can consider creating toolbars for those functions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure your notes are in order and you have summarized, provided discussion questions, and come to class tomorrow prepared. That's it. That's all. That's everything. We'll see you tomorrow.